Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. On July 29th, 1974, something dramatic happened in the Episcopal Church. Eleven women were ordained priests in Philadelphia. It was not an authorized ordination because women were not yet permitted to be priests in the church, but many were becoming frustrated with the inability of bishops and others to recognize women as equal to men. The preacher that day who offered the sermon for that ordination was a man named Dr. Charles B. Willie. He was a well-known professor of sociology at Harvard University Graduate School of Education and the Vice President of the House of Deputies, the second highest lay person in the Episcopal Church. After decades of discussion, the ordination was a line in the sand to those who still opposed the ordination of women. Although Dr. Willie anticipated before this becoming the first black president of the House of Deputies, he later resigned his position in protest when the House of Bishops refused to recognize the ordination of women of these 11, who later became known as the Philadelphia 11. But actually, some of you may know Dr. Willie as Chuck, the husband of Mary Sue Willie, who was the music director here at Emmanuel in the 1990s. Chuck attended services here at Emmanuel during those years. And the world was grieved to learn of Chuck's death this past Tuesday. We have lost a saint of God. Chuck was a remarkable man, the grandson of enslaved people, and yet rose to the highest levels of education and service, counseling senators and presidents, publishing over 100 articles and 30 books, teaching generations of students. His obituary reads, Quote, considering himself a lifelong learner, Willie followed the teachings of his classmate, Martin Luther King Jr., the theologians Howard Thurman and Martin Buber, and the anti-colonialist Mahatma Gandhi. Willie strove to bring the ideals of justice, equity, empathy, and reconciliation to every conflict he faced. He uncovered the best in everyone, understanding that no matter how intransigent the conflict Resolution required neither the annihilation nor the humiliation of the opposing sides. In other words, Dr. Willie had a vision, a vision of a just society imbued with empathy and reconciliation for all races, genders, and people. And his life's work reflected that vision. Dr. Willie's friend and classmate from college was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who we recognize this weekend. He too had a vision of a just society. In 1963, he gave his famous I Have a Dream speech, which is worth repeating, and I will share a small portion of it. Dr. King said that day, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day out in the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by their character. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be engulfed, every hill shall be exalted, every mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. When we let freedom ring, we will be able to speed up that day when all 
of God's children. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of that old spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty we are free at last. Two similar visions, that of Dr. Willie and that of the Reverend Dr. King. What was Jesus' vision? Today's reading from the Gospel gives us some insight. In this well-known passage about the wedding at Cana, Jesus, his new disciples, his mother, and probably a lot of other people they knew, were all gathered for a local wedding. Cana was in Galilee, Nazareth was Galilee. Everyone in Galilee kind of, kind of knew each other. They were all together. But then something embarrassing happens. The party runs out of wine. Mary turns to Jesus and tells him to do something about it. At first, Jesus says something to the effect of, you can't tell me what to do. But like a mother, Mary just kind of blows him off and says, yeah, 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 whatever, and then tells the servants to do what he tells you to do. And one thing to note is that although Jesus had not done yet anything miraculous in the Gospel of John, Mary seems to be aware of Jesus' supernatural gifts. So we suspect he'd been doing things prior to this, but not publicly. So Jesus ends up by doing what his mother tells him to do, and he instructs the servants to fill big stone jars full of wine, and he turns them well, into a fill them full of water, and he turns them into wine. And not just any wine, like really good wine. And this is where we get one of the funniest lines in scripture when this wine steward tells the groom, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests become drunk. But you've kept the good wine until now. What is this telling us about Jesus' vision? The theologian Dr. Elizabeth Johnson notes, the image of the wedding banquet is used frequently in scripture as a picture of the restoration of Israel, and wine is frequently used as a symbol of the joy and celebration associated with salvation. Amos, the prophet Amos, speaks of the day when the mountains shall drip sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it, for example. Isaiah speaks of the feast that God will prepare for all peoples, a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a well-aged wine strained clear. The abundance of fine wine is a symbol of the abundance of joy that awaits not only Israel, but all peoples on the day of God's salvation. Jesus' extravagant miracle of changing water into wine is a sign that in him, life joy and salvation have arrived. So Jesus' vision is the same as the prophets, that all people, not just the Israelites, but all people, not just men, but all people, not just white, but all people, will join with God at a feast of abundance. This sounds very much like the visions of both Dr. Willie and Dr. King faithful followers of Jesus. A feast where both men and women can be church leaders, a feast where both the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit together at the table. A feast where racism, sexism, ageism, ableism, and other forms of exclusion will be no more. Where the lion shall lie down with the lamb, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Christians. That is our dream, our hope, our vision. It is what we work for, what we pray for. While it hasn't fully arrived, we get glimpses of it in the work and prayers of those like Dr. Willie and MLK. May we continue the work and prayers that they have begun and let our lights shine.